This is episode two of Discovery 23. The issue that has arisen in Discovery 23 in the past has pertained to paradox in the appearance of spy cam peep of uh, loyalist progressives by deranged authoritarians working with pornographic rock stars. What I propose to do in this episode is to delve into the cultural heritage of this monotonous syncopation that dares to masquerade as paradox. You see, if you look at the pre-AIDS epidemic film um, from the early 80s called Diva, made in France, you learn a lot about what has been going on even as recently as 2021, 2022, even to that 23. If you dovetail this film with the reality in which it um, arrives as a theater going spectacle, you find that um, Corporations masquerading as um, respectable institutions like filmmaking corporations and rock stars with their production companies are presenting themselves as promotional towards progressive so social work. And this is a masquerade that was described gloatingly by one of their PR people, Lauren Bukes, in a book called Moxie Land, which takes place in South Africa. There's a peculiar similarity between Moxie Land and what's going on in the climate change movement. And the way to understand this in some ways is not only the control of reality from a tower of, of um, pseudo real representation, but through the film Diva as well, because the pseudo real representation in the film Diva tell the same story and the same message with the same air of a gloat. To show this, I've said in the past that Reagan's Federal Emergency Management Agency team had me in DC the day he claims he was shot, which is true. Working with Pentagon Disney, they gave me a brochure that reads, there's no such thing as objective reality, only what the jury believes. They set it up so the evil Yoko Ono could blame me for something that never took place in the double fantasy. There's no such thing as objective reality, only what the jury believes. The night before, Reagan came out and waved to me. I was very struck by that. It was strange. Another thing that happened is a man named John Cure Rant traded me two Hitler stamps for one Lincoln $20 bill. Two Hitlers for a Lincoln in a swap. How symbolic of what was going on there. And yet they arranged through Pentagon Disney's production to masquerade as the victims. When John shot James in the brain. Hmm. Flexus, is it? Looking at Diva, we see... It opens with, it's in the kid's mailbag. That's very telling of what was going on, the way they stashed their letters on poor old little Jimmy. And then, gloatingly demanded that he loved them. Because, 
free speech absolutism really boils down to the idea that when you beat a dog, it will love you more. That's the perishing thunder of the afflicted embrace the spirit of John Lennon and Martin Luther King. There were exorcisms to be performed by Diamond de Gullis, the malediction expert, and Frank Zappa with Jazz from Hell. These exorcisms took the form of cure by ranting, allowed them to rant. Go ahead and scream. Go ahead and cry out. You civilized man who can do no harm to anyone else for whom it is too punishing for you to dare to raise a fist. And they slash or murder Chan and Harvest here demanding that I make a threat because they have pulled the AIDS conspiracy on Mount Desert Island manufacturing a threat. And until they could prove that I was capable of the threat, they couldn't justify their absurd, indecent, and hideous crime. Rather than see another bystander murdered, I shook my fist at them. I was in my pajamas. I was at home. I didn't, the man who I shook my fist at had smashed me in the face with a basketball and nearly broken my glasses. And so I said from pajamas, I'll mess you up, boy. And they had what they long last need, an opportunity to justify poisoning me in the mouth in presentation for COVID. Oh, they're a caution. So John Cure Rant is free speech absolutism. And the notes are in the kids' mailbags. The evidence are in the kids' mailbags. What else do we see in this film? We see the only non-French English term is when the kid went a long way from, you know, Cologne to Paris or something on his moped. She says, so you are a real fan. I had hitchhiked from Pittsburgh from St. Louis just to hear Robert Fripp play. A, a Fripp related album by Brian Ferry appears in the record store in that film with the Peter Gabriel record. Um, it's about going to, by the way, the man who's responsible for the crime. And so you can get help from him. Support that the chief of police is actually the villain. Peter Gabriel. Well, the Brian Ferry record has a song called This Island Earth. And you might remember, if you've ever heard it, they say, I can't breathe. As the Geo Floyd and the geopolitical Pink Floydness. Just as COVID erupted and our granny suddenly couldn't breathe. I can't breathe, he says. Hmm. Who says that? Oh, Brian Ferry on this sign. And I mean, geopolitical fluid. I mean, geofluid, George Floyd. And I was told we still have to run into the streets to protest for the black man. Well, Diva is about a black singer. And there's a synthesis, almost a scene from The Matrix, where the Diva's gown appears in front of a poster of hers. And her boy, who looks like the man from 20th Century Fox, who played that he discovered the notes in the kids' mailbag for the Yoko Ono back when they were helping um, Shulman rip off the museums, was um, uh, appearing with a real mean expression in front of a poster that where the gown has been uh, hung and has fallen just enough to see the date, which is October 20th, my birthday. An identical image of that scene, almost as though it has morphed from the Matrix, as though a shapeshifter has done. Another man from the cast of the same film is in the same posture in front of the same poster, looking exactly the same way, when this time it's the skinhead. Curie, October 20th. This traces back to Bertolt Brecht's idea that man is man which was from the Weimar Republic, back when Doblin was a homosexual making stories about one-armed men in Berlin strangling German women. In 1931 or so, man is man. Because 
They wanted to prove that the walrus is in everybody. Even, even you are, all of you are even Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. And this is their idea of, um, of uh, insight when it's just ridiculous European mafia propaganda. And it's Moxie Land is about a corporation who manipulates young people into believing that they're doing something of an act of resistance when the whole time it's just to feed the files of their corporate power by triggering a backlash. Well, you know what they did with me. They made me, they subjected the persona to successive degradations of the X motive in order to assume, assume, subsume it into a larger structure dominated by its adversary. That was their words from Axis Hollywood. I'm of the belief that the way to stand up to something like this is to address it for what it is. Axis Hollywood. That the way to stop something that's noxious is to stand up to what it is which is Axis Hollywood. I don't think there's anything about the situation that could be mistaken as anything other than Axis Hollywood. An international consortium of Kennedy killing agencies making big movies. But unlike food companies, they're not regulated for their toxic content. And they strike from below. They strike from below and they play dirty. 